So we're now gonna deal with activating an account by email. And to do this, we need to take a few steps. But first of all, we'll start with something a little bit easier, and that's just not allowing people to log in if they haven't activated their account. Now we've got no users in our database at the moment. So let's just register a user. And register them there. So we get our normal email, which should come through. There we go. So hello, you have registered. And inside of our database table, we know that active is zero. So when the user actually logs in, uh, let's just close these for now. So when the user logs in, we know that once the validation passes, we look them up by their username or their email. What we can do is add a where clause in here to say where active is true. So now what's going to happen is when I attempt to log in, it won't let us in. So the next step then is when we actually register a user, around this point, what we want to do is create an identifier, a random string from the random lib that we've already seen. And we want to hash this and store it in the database. And the identifier we want to send by email within a link. And this link, when the user clicks on it, will pass through the identifier. We will look up the, or we'll hash the identifier, look up that hash in the database. If it matches, we can uh, activate the user's account. So let's start by just generating this identifier, this uh, random string. So identifier, it's going to be app random lib random string and that's going to be 128 and what we can do now is when we create a user's account we can set active to false we don't really need to do that but it's uh, helps to be explicit in the creation here and we can set the active hash to a hashed version of that identifier so we say app hash and we hash the identifier so let's just kill the page here and output the identifier so we can see what's happening here. So oh, we have a syntax error just there. Let's get rid of that. So when we register then, let's remove this record from the database. And let's register as normal. And hit register. Um, OK, so so the method name is generate string. So let's tidy this up again. Enter our details and hit register. So this is our identifier. If we look in the database table, we can see under active hash, we have a hashed version of that identifier. Like I said, we're gonna send this by email in a query string. When a user clicks on it and goes to our activate route, which we're going to be creating, it will be looked up and, and compared. So that's done. How do we send the identifier to our email uh, view? Well, we just put it in this array. Like we've seen earlier, we can send any data through to here. So that's just identifier. And then we set that key to identifier. So what we need to do now then is just update our email template to include this link. So if we go over to email under views, auth registered, what we can do is create a paragraph from this, create another paragraph, and we can say, activate your account using this link. And then we want to generate a URL to our activate route, which we haven't created yet. So don't worry, we'll go ahead and create that now. So under root and auth, let's create a new file. And we'll call this activate.php. Inside of here, we have a get root to activate. We then have our callback. And we want to use app as always. And in here, let's just echo out activate, just so we know where we are. So we're going to call this root activate. And then under our registered template, we can say URL for activate. 
On the end of this, we want to append to the query string. Remember when we send this email, we're passing through this user object. So all we need to do is say email equals, and then output the user's email. So that's user.email. And we want the identifier, which is just the identifier. So let's send this email and see what this looks like. And we'll see what problem we come up against when we just use URL4. So we will return back to this. Make sure we're not killing the page anywhere here. No, we're not. And we will remove this record from the database. And we'll go ahead and register again. Okay, so uh, named root, not, oh, of course, we haven't included our activate root inside of our main roots file. So let's do this now. And let's try and resend this. Oh yeah, we, we get this because this record has been created. So let's just fill in the password again and hit register. Okay, so we've been registered. We can check our email and we should see a new email here. Okay, so everything looks good. We've got our email in here. We've got the identifier, but we don't have the URL for the site in here. So the user can't actually click on this. They're going to have to copy and paste it over to your uh, end of your domain, which is really annoying. So how do we share the base URL of our application with all views? Well, if we go back over to our before middleware, remember where we were appending auth to our views, all of our views, so we can check if your user signed in or not. Well, we can do this uh, the same with our base URL. Now, where does our base URL come from? If you remember under your config that we created earlier, we have app URL, so we can just pass this into there. And that means that when you go live with your project, you can just change your domain and all of your uh, views that use the base URL will be updated. So we're gonna say this app config get app.url. And then inside of the registered template, we can just output that variable that we're sharing with all views. So once again, I know we're registering a lot here. It's pretty annoying, but we obviously need to test this out. We're gonna register again. Now we should see the correct link being sent through. So we'll wait for that email and there we go. So we can click on that and we see our activate route. Remember we just echoed out activate. So we've got the email in here. So we know which user to identify. We've got the identifier which we can hash and compare to the identifier that we're storing in here. So the, the hash I mean, what we're storing in here. And that's pretty much it. And then we can activate the user's account. So. Inside of this route then, we need to take all of these steps that we've just spoken about. The first thing is pulling through this data. So we'll do the same as we always do, request equals app request. So we'll get our request object, create a variable for the email, which is request, and it's get this time, not post, because remember it's in the query string. So we want to get the email and we want to get the identifier as well. There we go. So the first check then is, or the first thing we need to do is pick up the actual user's account. So we're going to say user equals app user where email equals that email and where active is false and we'll grab that record. So we don't want to activate a user's account if they already are active, that would be silly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check either if that user can't be found or if the hash doesn't match. So what we can do is up here, before we go on with this, hash the identifier. So hashed identifier, and that is app hash hash identifier. So we're grabbing the identifier, hashing it so we can compare it to the one in the database. And here we're going to compare that. So all we need to do is say app, and we check for false on this, app hash hash check. We pass in the user's active hash and the hashed identifier. So 
if that's the case, we can show an error, an unauthorized error or something like that. Or we could redirect the user off to just the home page with an error if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say app flash global. There was a problem activating your account. And then we're going to say app response redirect and we'll redirect to the home page. Otherwise, we just want to activate the user's account, flash a message, and then redirect them again. So we're going to say user. Now we could do th something like update it here, but we want this uh, activation functionality to be, to be reusable in case, for example, an admin wanted to be able to activate someone's account. So we're just gonna use a method called activate account on the user object, which we're gonna need to create now. So if you head over to uh, your user model, you can go ahead and implement this here. So we're going to say public function activate account. And all we're going to do in here then is say this update. And to act activate an account, we need to set active to true. So we need to set this to true and we need to remove the active hash. We don't want to keep the active hash in there. So active hash equals null. So now that we've done that, then let's close this off. Go back to our activate page. Um, after we've activated the user's account, we just want to flash a message and redirect. So let's copy and paste this down. And we'll say your account has been activated and you can sign in and we redirect home. So let's go ahead and test this out then. Uh, if we just, we, well, we could technically just refresh this page like that. Uh, we've got a little bit of an error there. So in user, okay, so let's open up that model. And oh, of course, missing symbol there. So when I hit enter there, there was a problem activating your account. So we need to work out why this is. And I knew this, this was going to happen. So if we take a look at our registered template, we're outputting the identifier just there. Under activate, we can kill this and output the identifier. So let's take a look at how this is working. So let's close this off and re-click this link. So if we take a look at the identifier, it starts with 08 or 08, and it ends, if we just go to the end of this, with SQJ. So we might think, well, this actually looks okay. But if you take a look at a point where we have one of these plus symbols, you can see there's actually a space in this hash. So these hashes do not match. And the reason for this is there are uh, characters in here which need to be encoded before we send them through to a URL. So let's uh, just basically start the whole process over again. And let's go back to our home page. And we will delete this user's account. Before we go and register again, we're going to fix this up. So under our registered uh, template here, we need to URL encode this link. Now, we can't just use, wrap this in a PHP function, but Twig has a URL encode function or encodability in here, uh, which does exactly the same thing as URL encode. So that's how we do it. So now that that's URL encoded, we'll be able to see the difference between this URL with these pluses and things like that and equals as well, uh, and uh, any other characters that are put in here. Uh, we'll be able to see the difference when we register again. So let's register again. Okay, so we're registered. Let's take a look at the email. And in here, you can start to see now we've got URL encoded characters. Perfect. So when I click this, we see that it's uh, exactly the same thing. We can see that we've got uh, all of the characters that we expect in here, including pluses. So what we can now do is we can go ahead and remove that die there, which is just going to act as if we clicked on the link now. When I enter here, your account has been activated and you can sign in. Refreshing in the database, we see active one and active hash set to null. We can go ahead and log in with that account now. And there we go, we're signed in. 
So although that was a little bit of a long winded, we are making sure that uh, we're not allowing anyone else to activate anyone else's account by generating a very large identifier, hashing that identifier uh, within the database table, and then obviously allowing the user to click that link in their inbox to go ahead and activate their account.